Hello Internet, Lengo here with another tutorial and in this series we're going to be learning how to use the Raspberry Pi Pico. So, a Raspberry Pi Pico, which is this beautiful board that you see right here or maybe on the screen, is different from the Raspberry Pi, which is a single board computer. The Raspberry Pi Pico is a microcontroller development board based on the RP2040. You can use the Raspberry Pi Pico for physical computing projects where it, it can control anything from LEDs, buttons, sensors, motors, or even other microcontrollers. So without any further ado, let's just jump into using this beautiful board. So the first thing I need you to notice if it's your first time to use the Raspberry Pi Pico is this button here labeled boot cell which is short for boot selection. To use the Raspberry Pi Pico for the first time, you need to follow along with what I'm gonna show you. First, press on this button right here, the boot cell. While still holding it, take your USB connected to it and put it on the PC. After plugging it in, count one, two, three. After a lot of second, you will see the Raspberry, your Raspberry Pi Pico appearing as a USB drive. Now open it, open it up. You'll find the two files. One is index and the other one is info, tag UF2. This one holds the information about your, Ras your Raspberry Pi Pico and the index is the one we're going to use. So I'm going to open it in a browser there we're gonna get some cool and nice information that we're going to use so now go down a little and choose MicroPython after choosing MicroPython because that's what we're going to use to program this beautiful board there's some other ways you can use but we're gonna use MicroPython in this tutorial so now I'm going to go here and choose Raspberry Pi Pico and click on it. There's a file that is going to be downloaded and that's what we're going to use. So after now the file is downloaded, I'll go into my downloads. Now the thing that I'm going to do is take this downloaded file and put it on the Raspberry Pi Pico. You can do that after copying the file to the Raspberry Pi Pico, it just disappeared. Now the next thing to do, because we're just going to use MicroPython, you need to have Python installed and an, ID, an IDE called Tony. This one, I'm going to open it. It looks like this and start programming our Raspberry Pi Pico. The first thing you need to check is that here in the very right bottom corner you can see that there is MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico. If you don't have it, maybe you have something else, you need to click here and see if you have the Raspberry Pi Pico. If you don't have it, that means that the steps that we've been talking about how to install it have not been done as, requ as requested or required. So now. As long as I have it right here, I know that I can program it. So the first thing to do, of course, in a lot of programming languages is to print the hello world. In this case here, we're going to say print. I'm going to say print and say hello world. All right. So before we run it, we need to save it on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So what I'm going to do is go here to File, Save As, and then you can see that I'm prompted to save it on the PC or maybe on the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to save it on the Raspberry Pi Pico and name it Test Test 101.py. Py is Python. Now, if I run it, you can see that then here I have Hello World, which is coming from our Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, let's see something else. Let 
The next thing we're going to do is to try to do a little loop statement. Let's use default. Maybe we can say for, maybe I. We need to display hello world five times. So we're going to say for I in range, maybe 10, I mean five, that's what we said. Then I'm going to say print. This is Pico, all right? So if we try to run it, you're going to see that we have this is Pico displayed five times. So there is something that is very important and useful. You can see that if we run this program on the Raspberry Pi Pico, it displays super fast. What if we needed this text to be displaying like, this is Pico, wait a second, this is Pico, wait a second. What will we do? That's where we came up with and we come up with a library that is called import, that is called uTime. So we call it by using import uTime. And then this uTime is going to help us add those little delay. So I need the, these words to be displayed, but wait a second. So now I'll have to use uTime.sleep. And then add one. One means we're going to wait one second. So now let's run and see what happens. So you can see that we're now displaying this, this is Pico, this is Pico, wait a second, wait a second. This is thanks to the uTime and the sleep function. So next now, let's maybe make an endless loop, like while true, and then maybe say print, So this is a program that will be running all over along as long as the Pico is connected to the PAL. So I'm going to say my name is Pico. All right. So then run it. You can see that we, we're not seeing anything because the program is running too fast. So if you wanted it to run like waiting like some amount of time, what we would do here is, oops, Use the uTime.sleep, just like that, and maybe add like two seconds. Now, if I run it again, notice I'm running on the Raspberry Pi Pico, as you see, you can see here. Now, let's run it. All right, maybe let's change the text to see the effect. Pico Pi, PY. Let's run it again. Let me stop this one and then run it again. Oops, what's wrong? Yeah, I'm missing the strings. Let me go ahead and do that again. My name is Pico PY. My name is Pico PY. Waiting half second. Waiting two seconds. Waiting two seconds. Now let's see if we needed maybe the uh, the user to enter an input. So we're gonna say that user input give it an equals to input just like that and ask the user to enter their name all right then we can go down here and maybe use an if condition say if user input equals to pico let's say that the user let's say to the user print pico is awesome all right everything we're doing here is being run on the raspberry pi pico right there so in a minute we're going to try to control these or maybe the onboard led which is the purpose the main purpose of this res of this lesson so now let's say that else in case now it's not right let's tell the user that print Using print, we're going to say 
oops wrong name all right so let's stop everything and run this again you can see that enter the name sorry should be into your name so i'm gonna say maybe k oops wrong name run it again if i put in pico pico is awesome cool so now let's get to the most interesting thing let's maybe try to control the own onboard led which is located right here which is located right here here on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So to do that, we need to import a library called machine. We also need to import the uTime. Then go down a little and declare these onboard LED. So I'm gonna say on board LED equals, this is how we do that. I'm gonna say machine.pin. Then, on the Raspberry Pi Pico, the onboard LED is connected to the pin 25. So that's what I'm going to put there, 25. And then say machine and specify that it's an output, the pin dot output, which means this pin is an output, all right? So go down a little and then say, now I need, it, I need the, the pin to be uh, you know, on waiting a half second, off waiting a half second, just like that. So for that to happen all the time, I need to use an endless loop, which is wide true. I'm going to use wide true. Go down a little and say that the on bold led is dot value dot value do this. And then set it to up, which is one. And then go here, say U time. We need to wait a half second. U time sleep. I'm gonna add 0 0.5, which is a half second. And then I'm gonna go, let me be lazy and duplicate this. Paste. Now here I'm gonna say zero. Now I need it to be on. And of course, wait a second. Wait a half second. I'm going to stop everything and then run again. Now you can see that we have our own board on the Raspberry Pi Pico blinking as we want it to. Perfect. So now you can see that again, I can save this file and choose to save it on my PC or maybe on the Raspberry Pi Pico. All right. So can you now do this with the external led so that's what we're gonna do first let's check this out you can see that to do that i have a resistor okay uh, i'm using the 220 resistor and a led so the led is connected into gp or maybe the general purpose pin number 14 and I have also the ground connected to the ground right here, as you can see, even on the physical prototype. Now let's go here. So the thing I need to change right here is to go here and add on board, I mean, and add external LED. So I'm going to specify on which port it is, it is connected, on which pin it is connected, equal to machine dot pin dot sorry and then specify that it's on pin 14 then say machine define that it's an output out all right and then if i wanted to synchronize i will go here just like that maybe say external external sorry external led I'm gonna put the value high of course then go down here put the value to zero all right let's stop everything and run again you can see that we have 
even our external lid being you know blinking as we want it to perfect so this is more like how you can deal with controlling a lead from the raspberry pi pico so we were used to using the arduino but now we can start using uh, doing these things using the raspberry pi pico now thanks for watching this tutorial if you like this video please don't forget to put a thumbs up and if you want to follow along on more tutorials please consider subscribing to the channel and support me thanks